Hey there, everybody. This is Pastor Rick Broadman Baptist Church. This is the Broadman Word for May 10th, 2023. And today's title is Soul Changing Faith. And I want to read you a little something from the beginning of Romans from the Apostle Paul. And uh, we'll talk about it. Paul starts off writing his letter. It says, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who as to his earthly life was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ our Lord, through him we receive grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith for his name's sake. And you also are among those Gentiles who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. So, we talk a lot about um, faith and trust and hope and being holy, which means we're separate, you know, not part of the world anymore. You've heard me say these things uh, a whole bunch. But I wonder what you think about you having a calling. You know, in the Baptist faith, um, when a pastor, associate pastor, or somebody uh, in those positions, deacon, is um, brought to the church... It's in response to a call, in view of a call. There are folks who have seen a call on the life of the individual. They have in investigated it uh, along with them, and uh, the call is just then being recognized. It's being put forth before the church for agreement that there is a call on this individual's life to serve uh, in that particular congregation. It's one of the reasons that each congregation is able to choose their own pastors and deacons is because it's such uh, an intimate uh, and interwoven part of the church, um, this call, that it needs to be uh, set apart by that church and, and viewed by that congregation uh, and agreed upon um, by that congregation that yes this individual was called to serve here also there's no central command in uh, the book of acts which is basically the the handbook for the post ascension church uh, the the new um, church uh, there is no central authority no central committee no um, pope handing out priests to to folks so um in following with what uh, scripture shows us and the appointment and calling of folks uh, we do that so considering that and then taking a look at one of these called apostles um, paul in his words to the church at rome and he's saying that it is through Christ that we received grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to obedience. So that's the mission, right? To call all Gentiles, which he's speaking about anybody who wasn't a Jew um, or at that point would have been a Jewish Christian. Anybody who wasn't a Jewish Christian at that point, um, the call goes out. Um, the, mission, the ministry, the mission is to call all of them to Jesus Christ. Um, so the grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith for his name's sake. And then here we go. And you also are among those Gentiles who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. So you see, um, you've been called. You've been called to Christ. There are uh, Hopefully you're a member of a church and, you know, those folks determined that you were, in fact, like-minded and uh, had professed Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And so they accepted you into the body of Christ there, wherever there might be. 
but there was something that happened uh, before that, and a call was placed on your life, a call to belong to Jesus Christ. So what I want you to think about today then is, how would somebody know that you belong to Christ? How would somebody know that you are on mission, that you've been called, you've been given a ministry, and you have a 24-7 mission from God? That's a big question. What I'm looking for you to do is have some introspect and listen to the words of Paul and listen to how he's speaking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, through holiness, was appointed to, son of, to the Son of God in power. Um, and so his resurrection from the dead was what led to that. And so we then, being resurrected people and living in the spirit of Christ Jesus as uh, not of our own, but of his spirit through his strength by our grace and salvation imparted to us because of the profession of faith. All of that came together at one moment in a believer's life and the call went forth. You, God himself uh, placed his hand upon your life and called you. He called you to the ministry, uh, the ministry of reconciliation left by Jesus Christ for his church to accomplish, to gather as many, and Paul calls them Gentiles, but it, to gather as many as is possible and bring them to the cross for God to also put his hand on their life. You have been called to the ministry of the gospel. Listen what um, Paul says here. He says, set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets and in the Holy Scriptures. So there's a sense here that Paul believes that God long ago had his scripture written and ready to go, and it was delivered, um, and it was delivered to some folks, uh, communicated his will, his love, his grace, uh, communicated through his prophets, and now um, we are to carry that message forward. The apostleship then rests on us. We are, in fact, individually um, disciples of Christ, apostles of the gospel, and called, specifically, individually called to deliver the gospel, to be ambassadors of the gospel, and all the other descriptions that scripture has. You've heard me say them many times. So, look at your life as a calling. You have passions, I'm sure. Uh, you have or had a profession, I'm sure. You have skills, I'm sure. But did you ever think of yourself as being called? Yeah, it's a little bit different uh, view. Uh, Paul says that we are, in fact, called. Called to the gospel ministry. And so that doesn't mean that you have to be uh, a pastor or a deacon or associate pastor, anything like that. doesn't mean you, you, you've ever had to take any sort of leadership in the church. Um, it doesn't matter. You are still called to the gospel message. Um, that happened when you converted, when you uh, professed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If, in fact, it was a true conversion, if it was a true confession, um, then you are now saved and always saved. You were sealed um, to the body of Christ. Uh, you became one of God's adopted children and heir to his kingdom. Uh, the throne of heaven will be shared with you at some point. Uh, with all of us, we will reign with Jesus Christ um, at the day of the Lord and after. 
So taking a look at that, place that in perspective in your life and how you think about yourself and how you conduct your life. Is it in fact a, mis a ministry? Because your life is supposed to be a ministry. Uh, you are a priest preaching out the gospel 24-7. Whether you ever preach a sermon or not doesn't matter. Your life is a sermon. And you are called to that life to preach that sermon and to be uh, an earthly representative of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, for all of your days here. Job one. So, brothers and sisters, think about yourself in a new context now. Think of yourself as not being a random or regular Christian because, one, there is no such thing. And two, the words, words of Paul make it very clear that God had a specific call for you to carry out. And now you need to pick that cross up and run with it. Uh, everybody has their cross to bear. You've heard that in your life. Well, you need to find your cross um, and pick it up and take it where God directs you to. Listen, I love you. I hope you have a marvelous day. I'll talk to you next time.